Coming up on tonight's episode, things are getting spooky as we explore three of the most mysterious wonders of the entire series. And what better way to set the tone for our spookiest episode of the season than with the most fundamental component for a spooky night. This is the moon. Throughout history, our moon has been a constant source of fear, wonder, romance, and inspiration. You could make a very strong argument that it is the greatest wonder of all time. To think that almost the entire human race has looked up at some point and marveled at this heavily cratered world. In fact, what's rather unique about our moon is that we always see the exact same side of it. Isn't that weird? I mean, have you ever stopped to think for a second, what does the so-called dark side of the moon really look like? Truth is, it's actually super boring, appearing far less complex than the side facing us. The reason we always see the same face of the moon is due to a process called tidal locking. The moon rotates on its own axis at precisely the same rate at which it orbits around the Earth meaning we always get the same view. Out of all the wonders featured in this series, the moon is exclusive in the sense that it is the easiest out of every single one of them to image. In fact, it's a testament to human technology that we've now reached a point where those little rectangles that go in our pockets and let us speak to one another from far away are now getting cameras installed that are good enough to image surface detail on our moon. Generally, throughout the course of this series, I've set the bar at a $500 smart telescope for what it takes to be able to image our targets. But this time, I'm going to start with a $28 telescope. Despite the earth shattering vibrations caused by my cat being a nosy bugger, I've been able to capture this footage of the moon. You don't necessarily need any special astronomy cameras to image the moon in jaw dropping detail. Your smartphone is still capable of capturing amazing images, especially when looking for a $200 telescope like this. I mean, look at that. It's hard not to fall in love with this hobby after seeing these immense craters from another world. Perhaps coolest of all, you're achieving real views like this from the comfort of your own garden. This is the shot that I managed with a $500 smart telescope. As you can probably surmise, it is far better suited to imaging deep sky objects as opposed to planetary objects like the moon. The million dollar remote observatory captures some spellbinding images that force you to ask the question, can you see the American flag on the surface of the moon? I mean, judging by these images, you'd have to assume so right? If not the flag, then certainly the landing module. Well, I tried this and I mean, I really, really, really tried this, but to answer the question, no, you can't. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is borderline impossible to do so from here on earth. To give you an apt comparison, it's like asking someone to spot your car through a telescope while stood on the moon. Yeah, it's difficult enough to do that from the edge of our own atmosphere, let alone 384,000 kilometers away. Now, I did my best to dig deep and find a telescope or even a satellite that has attempted to image the flag on the moon, but it wasn't easy. It has now been 50 plus years since we last landed on the moon, but thanks to our Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, I was able to find this view of the Apollo 11 landing site. This right here is where humans first set foot on the surface of the moon. As I'm sure you can appreciate during your first attempt at landing on an alien world, you kind of want to land somewhere where the surface is a bit smoother. And as you can tell from these images, that's not easy. This is precisely the spot where Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, and later, through the imaginative power of the 3D software blender, Damon Scotting took their first steps on another world besides Earth. That's one small step for man, one it seemed like such an impossible feat at the time, the idea that a species that had only built the first airplanes about 50 years ago could land on the moon. And yet, we really did it. This desolate landscape taught us a lot about the origins of our own world, but with most of the biggest questions answered, there has been little urgency for us to return. Ironically, the accomplishment of landing on the moon was so absurdly beyond what we felt was achievable at the time, that today, the number of moon landing conspiracists are higher than ever. I think that's all many of us can ever hope to accomplish in life. To do such an insanely good job at something that future generations can only look back and say, fake. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has actually amassed a wealth of images of each of the landing sites, to the point where you can view time lapses of what certain locations look like throughout the day. Yeah, I love the moon. I can make a 14 part series about just the moon, to be honest. I think whilst a lot of the wonders on our list can look very disappointing for a telescope, the moon always delivers jaw dropping views regardless of the size of your telescope. As for its ratings, the moon gets a very high beauty rating of 92, a modest power rating of 56, thanks for the tides, I guess and an inspiring mystery value that is also 92, giving it a top 10 overall wonder rating of 80. It's 
kind of weird how the moon can represent so many different vibes. It can be romantic, it can be inspiring, and it can also be very spooky. It's for these reasons and many more that it takes up the number eight position on our Wonder Wall. Next up, things get even more mysterious as we observe the demon star that blinks. This is Algol. We all know our ancestors used to love making up funny little stories about the true meaning of the stars and the legends that birthed them. But whilst for the most part, these had all spawned from people's wild imaginations, our next wonder is a very real mystery, one that deeply concerned our ancestors. And as you can imagine, when a star in our night sky starts to dim in brightness, you can only interpret this as a bad omen, which is precisely what our ancestors did. They named this particular star Al Gol, which is derived from Arabic for Ra's Al Ghul, which translates to the head of the ogre, which we now know as the demon star. It wasn't just the Arabs that had a bad feeling about it, cultures from all across the globe associate it with violence and misfortune. The ancient and Egyptian calendar for lucky and unlucky days was created 3,200 years ago, but even then, Algol was strongly linked to unfortunate events. Ptolemy associated Algol with people dying by having their heads decapitated, a very similar story to that of Perseus and the snake-haired gorgon Medusa. Now, although Algol may appear as one star to us in our night sky, it is actually made up of two stars, Algol 1 and Algol 2. These two stars are closer than the Earth is to Venus, or our sun is to the planet Mercury, which is very close indeed. Our view of the star here on Earth is unique. From our own point of view, Algol 1 and Algol 2 form an eclipsing binary star because they orbit in the same plane as our own line of sight. This pair of eclipsing binary stars is separated by mere 0 0.062 astronomical units. Now that is astonishingly small, to the point where matter is being transferred from one star to the other due to the more massive star's stronger gravitational influence. As you can see here, Algol 1 is extremely bright. To be as precise as possible, it is 26 times brighter than Algol 2. Algol 2 orbits around Algol 1. Watch what happens when Algol 2 passes in front of Algol 1. We go from having the brightness of two stars down to the brightness of effectively just one star. But then it carries on moving around the star, and then after about 69 hours, it comes back around again. So every three days that you look at this star, you'll notice there's a period where it looks a lot dimmer than it normally is. I mean, there's no way that anyone could have known that this is what was happening. The angle at which the regular eclipsing of this vampire star was occurring meant that the starlight from it was regularly blocked. It sounds precisely like the kind of thing that the ancients would have dreamt up. I mean, vampire star, come on, seriously. But it's real. It's really happening, and even as an amateur, you can document its changes in brightness. Here's my own attempt at doing so. At this current point in time, Algol is just under 93 light years away from us, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, we once had a fairly close and intimate relationship with this star. Roughly 7.3 million years ago, Algol passed to within just 9.8 light years of our own solar system, which meant its brightness at that point would have been an apparent magnitude of negative 2.5, which means that due to its close proximity to us, Algol was once the brightest star in our night sky. Imagine the stories that our ancestors would have told if the brightest star in our night sky was one that dipped as violently as Algol seems to. Perhaps in the same way our ancestors worshipped the sun and moon, Algol may have had a stronger influence on previous cultures besides telling them what days were unlucky and when and when not to go to war.
Now, whilst being one of the most mysterious objects of the entire series, it also happens to be the least beautiful. Sheesh, imagine losing a beauty contest to Uranus. Right, next up for our final wonder of the night, we have the Devil in Disguise. This is NGC 1555. What you're about to see is arguably the most undeserved wonder on our list. Why? Well, for starters, it's extremely difficult to observe and it's relatively unheard of. So your first question might be, why would you include it in the series? Well, that's because Heinz Variable Nebula is the epitome of wonder. It's a deep sky object that truly captures your imagination. Whilst it was too difficult to image with a C-Star S50, I did manage to capture this shot with the $1 million remote observatory. I call it the Devil in Disguise. At its core is a variable star named T Tauri. Now, unlike the predictable pattern of our goals of varying brightness, this newborn star is throwing an unpredictable tantrum of epic proportions. It is drawing in matter through the enveloping clouds of dust and gas, and in doing so, the star rapidly brightens. It rotates once every three days, and the huge sunspots on its surface only add to its variability. When the dust settles on this series and all 42 wonders have finally been revealed, I expect a lot of debate about which wonders should have made the cut, but didn't. And I have no doubt that many people will point to the Devil in Disguise as one of the first that should have been dropped. But for me, there are few objects as mysterious and imaginative in our night sky as this variable nebula. And that is why it earns a wonder rating of 73. And with that being said, NGC 1555, or Heinz Variable Nebula, ranks 23rd oh, on our leaderboard. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I hope to see you again next week when we'll explore three new wonders and see where they rank on our wonder wall. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical. Next time on the 42 Wonders of Our Night Sky, things get explosive as we take a look at supernova explosions and the infamous Fireworks Galaxy.